All right, guys. We are on a new job for Oduckably Concrete. I want to take you guys along on this backyard really quick and show you what we got going on. All right, so here we are in the backyard. We're gonna be renewing and replacing all this concrete. It's all pretty worn down. You can see one uh, pad of the concrete is raised up or one has sunk more likely. And it's all cracked up and ready to get torn up and replaced. We're also gonna be adding drains, but we're gonna be putting the drains in the uh, grass area. We're gonna be adding a little sh uh, concrete shed slab right here. A pathway along this house. And then concrete back here as well. So that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing for this job. Sweet and simple little concrete patio. Another, one little tricky thing that we are gonna be doing though, <clears throat> is right here patio is connected to the concrete i mean the patio cover is connected to the concrete right here and we got to take this concrete out so what i'm going to do is i got a two by four and i'm just going to support this patio cover with a two by four on like a 45 degree angle coming down here into the dirt so it holds up this side of the patio cover this one's actually already off the dirt but we still have to hoist it up so that when we pour concrete it's high enough up and out of our way but yeah so that's pretty much the whole gig we're, what we're gonna be doing should be a fun one what do you think Jimmy Pablo, Pablo. ready you ready for this yes, I'm ready. hell yeah <laughs> All right, what's going on everybody? This is Tim O'Dell with Odell Complete Concrete. What we're going to be doing in this video series is we're going to be ripping out this uh, old existing concrete patio and renewing it. We're also going to be adding drains and that will pretty much be the whole scope of work. And for this job, I thought I'd get a little bit of a workout instead of bringing a skid stir or anything like that. I just ended up ripping out this whole patio the old-fashioned way some sledgehammers a little uh, a bar and a jackhammer we pretty much use the jackhammer the whole time on the steps because that area is really wedged in it takes a lot of time to break the area up but for the main big patio area me and my guy Jimmy were just breaking up the patio with a sledge and bar and it kind of works out nicely like that because when there's no rebar or wire mesh in the concrete slab you can break it up fairly quickly with just prying the concrete up and smashing it and you'll see us move pretty quickly on that this was a lot of work though definitely labor intensive fun little fact too we used two low boys to take out all this concrete which is about 10 which can hold about 10 tons uh, each low boy. So we took out about 40,000 pounds of concrete by hand. All right, here we are, day two of the project. As you can see, we got most of all the concrete out. Just a little bit of debris is left to grade, scrape up, and take to the, the dump. So we're gonna be doing that. We're also gonna be chipping down the side of the uh, foundation footing over here. Super weird. Let me show you what's going on over here. All right, so this wasn't like a foundation footing over here, but at first I thought it may be a foundation footing just because how deep this concrete actually went on the side of this house. I was really debating if it was the foundation or not, but I eventually figured out it wasn't. It was just about 14 inch concrete poured next to the house. I don't know why it was that deep, but it was. It was insanely deep. You can see down there how deep it really went but you can't exactly see unless I until I tore it all up and took it out but I measured it and it went down about 14 inches right there against the house and it just it took Pablo all day on the jackhammer 
jacking against the side of the house to get this concrete out for us. So, there's a little funky situation going on in this area. 1950 home, so, you know, building back then, they got away with a lot more different things than we do nowadays. This was also another funky little thing going on over here. The concrete originally, you can see right from here, went up to about here. And you can see that that's above the the foundation of this house, which is, you, you never do something like that. That is not a common thing to do. You do not pour above a foundation. Because uh, the concrete will eat away at the wood because masonry, anything with rock always retains water. A slight, a slight a bit of water always. And that will seep into the wood and rot it out. And you can see it's rusted. This, they tried preventing it by putting a flashing. You can see this flashing they put up, but it's completely rusted in some areas. So, not good stuff that they did here. Oh yeah, we're gonna just repatch all that. Put some um, new flashing on, patch it up, stucco, and all that good stuff to try to best seal this as you can, really. All right, so we're gonna get to work and get to going. Okay, so before pouring the steps, we are covering everything with flashing and Henry's roofing. It's adhesive and it waterproofs everything. So that's what we're doing right now. Against this uh, sliding glass door and this one right here. Mainly because you can see it's all rusted out. All the flashing is all pretty much used up and gone. So we're gonna coat it put some flashing over it and then coat it again just to be extra safe that this wood will not get uh, damaged for the future so what I ended up doing here is I just used Henry's roofing tar it's a water resistant adhesive and I just put that right on top of the wood then I actually put some flashing over the adhesive and then I put some more of the uh, roofing tar to really make sure that this is completely waterproof and then I actually am gonna stucco over that as well so I don't think we're gonna have any water issues in the future on that the next thing we're doing right here is we are completely taking out the posts right now they're just free floating we're just taking those out and I'm also forming up the patio area what we are doing is we're going out about 12 feet off the house and we're just doing a straight line with some curved edges um, for the new concrete patio area. I'm also getting ready to start forming up the steps. And for the steps, we're going to be making them 36 inches out. We're using 2x8s to form up the steps. I cut them down to about um, 6 inches because I'm going to be making all the steps 6 uh, inch steps down to the concrete patio. I used uh, two blocks of wood and then I just um, marked each in to six inches and then I tapered them down to six inches instead of uh, eight inches since they were two by eights. And then I just cut them down to size. We're pretty much going to be matching the old steps how uh, long they were. We're just renewing them. Okay, so turn the laser level on I got my laser level receiver what I'm doing is I'm just establishing height right now on my top step which is established right there pretty much and then I transferred the laser over to this side so I have the exact same step right there just like that Yeah, so that's exactly the step right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna form this step up 
and the bottom step. Let's go see. Don't need that anymore on, so we can turn that off. Set this there for now. Let me go see how these guys are doing. Did you guys get it out? Can I drill again? Yeah, no, you can go for it. Okay. Just want to see how far you guys were. I just had to talk over a quick part. All right, so as you guys just saw, as I was getting this step height established over here on the next uh, landing outside the door, um, I had the guys dig it, start digging out the drains, getting the drains all established. We're also going to be connecting all of the drains to the downspouts that there were in this backyard, which there was only one. So they were connecting the downspouts and the drains all together as I was doing the steps. And the way I got the height of the steps was I pretty much just went right off the foundation at the same height where the foundation was. Um, not where the existing steps were of this concrete job, but where the, the concrete, right before where the concrete met the wood. And then I'm using a string line from the other steps down to these steps to make sure that they're perfectly in line with each other. And then I also used a square to make sure all of the steps were completely square with one another. And then you can see right here we're digging out the drains and I'm putting the drains right at the end of the concrete patio edge because all the concrete are all, is going to be sloped towards the grass area which they're going to be putting in artificial turf back here. I put about I want to say about five to six drains in this backyard so when the artificial turf guys come in they can kind of slope the turf or grass towards these drains kind of set them up how they want and as we were digging out the drains we just made sure that we got about one percent slope on our drains all the way to the front of the house and when we went underneath the side uh, of the house blocks foundation to get our drains out to the front of the house. Okay, so drains are pretty much all set and done. They just need to be covered. Got about a 1% slope. We even lined the drains up with the downspouts by the powder cover so when it does drain out off the concrete it'll go right into the drains then we put another one over here in the middle of the turf area that'll help it drain right there follow, the, follow this down connect this one to the downspout right there put one more drain in the middle right here and we went under the foundation of this wall and then out to the front we're still digging down and we're gonna take that all the way to the front and this backyard will have no water issues for the future what I'm going to do right now though, is I'm going to start forming this whole backyard. Here you can see the string line. The string line re represents one of the form boards. This board's straight as hell. <clears throat> Alright, hold on. I'm going to come through right here, Jimmy, a little bit. See, that's where our board's going. Right about here, y'all. Just barely made it. <clears throat> but this all this dirt, see this dirt needs to go down. Because yeah. I can't get uh, it to the right height for that string line. Okay. Has to go, all this dirt has to be dug out more.
Oh no. Oh yeah, I'm at the right height. I'm at the right height. Okay, hold this open real quick, Jimmy. And let's get a I'm gonna get a level real quick. I wanna see what the slope is. Where's my levels? In the garage, huh? It's always nice to have a scrap 2x4 that's longer than your level to reach the places where your level doesn't reach. Now let me show you what I mean. Hold this. Oh, it's a big stick. Put it on that concrete and reach it over to this here. Oh, I don't even think that one's long enough. No. Oh, it is, but the dirt's in the way. We gotta dig that dirt down real quick. Dig the dirt. Okay, let's try it now and do it the other way. Flip, flip it like that. No, no, no. Like that. This? No, on the concrete though. Come on, Jimmy. Make me look bad on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much our slope going into this backyard. Right about, right about there. It's about 1% slope. Oh, can you hold that, Jimmy? Keep it there. Okay, I'm right on the string line right now. Hopefully you guys can see that. And Jimmy's about 1% slope going into the backyard, which is okay because we do have drains all back here. We got a lot of drains back here. So we won't have any flooding problems in the backyard. Just back in the day on these old 1950 houses in Long Beach, they just built them a little funky. Obviously they didn't care to dig down the block wall foundation. I mean, it's literally as high as the concrete over here. When I was breaking out this area, it was like paper thin concrete because of the foundation of these block walls. Remember that, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. No good. No fun. No good. Not okay. So, yeah, we'll just go with that. So you can see those string lines crossing right there and that's my square point off the house, off the side of the house to the left. What I did was I measured 12 feet off the house where the sliding glass door was, where the steps are to the string line and then I pulled a string line all the way to the house that you're looking at right now to the left and put a square on it and made sure that was square. The next thing I did, I measured four feet off that side to get a sidewalk and then I just squared that corner up and that gave me a perfect square for the patio and we're making a radius curve on that corner once we knew we had perfect slope on the drains all we did was we started to bury all the drains and the areas where the drains rise up we made sure the drain caps were completely in line with one another by measuring off of our string lines all right, project's coming along. Got a lot formed up. Got the drains in. There and there. There and there. Got the studs out here. Dig it, watch out, there's a pipe right there, Jimmy. You see that pipe? Be careful. Yeah, it runs right here. We're good. Woo, that's We're scary. good. Steps formed. Grading happening. This side's all formed too. And we carry on to this side over here. It's another drain. 
And we're actually gonna leave that open over there for the dog's restroom area. Wait, what did they sell at the Riverside? That makes it cheap. Like, what? Well, cool. He think, said it gets cheap too. I, I think uh, those people over there, they, they steal Cheaper. Freaking, they steal the tools and uh, I guess they sell them or something. Oh shit, yeah. dude, I got all my tools jacked one time. The well, jackhammer, like, pressure washer, anyway. bunch of hand tools. Thousands. Thousands. Sucks, dude. Yeah, Shitty. Uh, I mean, like, so my dad, my dad yeah. Shit. I should check that out at that spot. Maybe I'll find my tools. <laughs> also, you know, just yeah. So it's definitely not uncommon to lose your tools in construction. I think it's happened to everybody at least once in their lifetime. Uh, a couple of videos back, I explained how I lost my tools. Once you lose your tools once, I don't think you lose them again. You're much more overprotective of them, especially when it's a big loss, like how mine was. I lost jackhammer, pressure washer, a couple of hand tools. So it definitely wasn't um, a fun experience, but uh, a learning experience nonetheless. And then you can see right here what we're doing is we are compacting the whole area where we will be placing all of the concrete making sure it's nice and 100% compacted. We're also installing our rebar right now, two foot on centers. And then we also ran the rebar up into the steps and just gave them a little bend so that they uh, follow up into both steps. So it's one continuously poured or uh, running rebar slab. And then we are just tying all of our rebar together so that when it comes to the pour day and we start lifting all the rebar, everything lifts up together. Also, make sure you guys stay tuned for part two of this project because it will be the concrete pour. And also, don't forget to give us a like, share, subscribe. We really do appreciate that. All right, so we just got all the rebar installed. Here is how it looks. This job was ready to pour out. Get the rebar running up to the slab of the steps. Same thing for this side. It's ready to go. So yeah, we'll be pouring this the next day. Didn't get a whole lot of shots here on the side yard, but it was hard to film because of these trees right here. Here's how it's looking. And we're ready.